Hey guys, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to vectorize any photo using Adobe Illustrator. Most people, they import a photo and they click image trace, maybe select a high fidelity photo, and then they call it done. But the problem with that method is it doesn't give you a ton of control over the colors of the image, and you're left with a photo that just looks like a photo. And to me, yes, that could be cool, but I also think it's nice to have more of a stylistic look. My approach is going to give you much more control over your image, and you'll have a three color separation by the end of the video, which is great for things like t-shirt designing. But before we begin, did you guys know that 18% of you are not subscribed? That's insane to me. If you guys want to change that, I left a convenient link in the description below at the very top of the description. You click on that, you can subscribe, and you won't miss my weekly videos. With that being said, let's get started. Step number one is removing the background from your photo, and you don't have to use Photoshop for this, but I'm going to just because I have it installed. But if you have Affinity Photo or any other photo editing app, you can use that and it's going to work just fine. The goal is to remove the background so it eliminates all of the noise in the background because when we do these next steps in Adobe Illustrator, it's going to make our lives so much easier. I provided the download link to this photo if you guys want to follow along. I'm going to right click on the layer and rasterize it so it's just a flat layer pretty much. Once you do that, you can go to properties and select subject or if you have this little bar down here, you can also do it from that bar if you have the latest version of Photoshop. For those people that don't have the latest version installed, you shouldn't see this bar right here, and that's okay. You can find it under properties. Just click select subject, and it's going to do a pretty decent job of selecting the subject. Once you have that selection, just create a clipping mask. Let's go ahead and add a stroke to this image, and this is going to make so much more sense, I promise. But we're going to make it about this big, just enough to fill the entire image with black. One optional step is to add a camera raw filter to bring out some more detail of the image, which will help with the color separation process that we do in Adobe Illustrator. So let's go ahead and go up to filter, camera raw filter. With the camera raw filter, I can raise the shadows up and this is going to bring out a little bit more detail in my image. And then I'm gonna resize my image just a little bit about right there. And from here, we can select the entire artboard with Command A or Control A if you're on a PC and then Shift Command or Control C and that's going to copy it. Now I'm in Illustrator and I have the same exact document size which is 10 inches by 10 inches at 300 resolution. And to show you what that looks like, it's right here in RGB color mode. Raster effects is set to 300. Everything else is default and that's pretty much it. And now we can just press Command or Control V to paste that image in place. At this point, if we wanted to, we can literally just click this little drop down menu next to image trace and choose high fidelity photo and then just click image trace. And now we have a vector photo and if I click on the photo, you can see all of the different colors. But if you want a little bit more control and maybe more of a stylistic approach, here's another way I like to do it. So to do it my way, I'm just gonna click and drag this photo onto the gray background here. And I'm gonna go up to effect and we want to choose effect gallery. Once you see effect gallery appear, you're gonna go down to texture and choose grain. And we're just going to use a regular grain for this. For my intensity, I'm gonna set it to about 30, somewhere around there. And then for the contrast, I'm gonna lower it to like 55. And that looks pretty good. And I'm gonna press okay. Before I continue, I'm gonna select my image and go up to object, rasterize. And I'm just going to select RGB under color model. Resolution is set to 300 still. We don't wanna change that. Background can stay white and then let's press okay. So now we have a rasterized image, which is great because we can go apply another effect, which is what we're going to do. Before we do that though, we wanna make a copy of this. So let's go ahead and hold an option or alt if you're on a PC, left click and drag and let go, and that will create a duplicate copy, and then do that one more time. This depends on how many colors you want, of course. You don't have to create three different copies. You could do four or five or just one or two. So you can essentially just have a black and white image or have five colors if you wanted to with this method. I'm focusing on three colors for this video, so I'm gonna select my first color or my first image here and go up to Effect, Effect Gallery once again. Now we don't wanna apply another grain, instead we wanna go up to Sketch and we wanna choose Stamp. What you wanna focus on is light and dark balance and I'm gonna set mine to about three and the smoothness, I'm gonna put it at one and press OK. So that is our first layer done. For the second image, we're applying stamp again. So let's go up to effect. And then this time we could just choose stamp at the very top, not apply stamp because that's going to apply the previous settings that we just used. We want to apply new settings. So let's uh, just select stamp. And as you can see, this is the previous settings, of course, but it's not actually applying it to our image. It gives us control over the light and dark balance still. So what I want to do is raise the level just a little bit more, probably about right here, we don't wanna lose that eye yet. That should be all right, let's press okay. And now our second layer is done and you can see the intensity difference, right? This one obviously has way more shadows than this one, which is great because now we have contrast between colors. So now let's go to the last 
final layer here and let's apply the stamp again under effect. Only this time, this one's going to be bumped up quite a bit. Let's go about right here with it and press OK. So starting with the first layer again, let's just image trace it. And you want to click on this little folder to pull up the image trace panel. And we do want to take the noise all the way down to one pixel because we do not want uh, the noise being um, deleted pretty much because if we raise the noise level up, to let's say 44 pixels, you're gonna see the image get kind of artifacty and it's just going to get rid of a lot of those fine details and we don't want that. So let's go ahead and make sure noise is set to one and we do not want to ignore white on this. So just keep ignore white unchecked and then we can click expand and we're gonna do this for every single layer that we just created. So now let's click on the second layer here and go image trace and then make sure the noise is set to one again expand and last but not least our final layer let's image trace it and you can play with the other settings if you really feel like it but i don't really see the need to unless you really want to fine tune the detail but um, i found that these settings work just fine as default so there we go now noise is set to one let's expand it now the only thing we have to do is delete the backgrounds out of all three layers real quick so that is what that black stroke is for. It separates the white on the inside from the background, which is what we need. Because if we didn't have that stroke on our, our photo, what would happen is the white would basically mesh with the background and you would lose all the detail in the image and you wouldn't be able to make the selection properly. So that is exactly why we have that stroke. And um, it's really easy now. We just delete the white background, make sure there's no white on the outside. And now with your direct selection tool, you just press A on your keyboard to go to that. Now on this layer, we're just going to select the black and we're going to go up to select same fill color and we want to make sure that we are selecting the black or else the white might get selected so just be very cautious of selecting the white you do not want to select the white or else when you do that select method it's going to select the white too and now if i zoom out you can see that all the black is selected only and if i press delete on my keyboard you can see that we are left with color separations pretty much right obviously we don't have the color yet but now we can add color. So let's go ahead and select our first layer here and let's just choose something maybe red. We can leave this photo as is and call this done and leave it black and white, leave it red, whatever color you want. But now we have three different colors to work with. So let's go ahead and stack them on top of one another. So the second one is going to go second, of course. So let's bring that on top and make this maybe yellow so it stands out a little bit more. And that already looks so cool. But we have one more layer, which is our highlight layer. Let's put that on top and see what happens. You do want to make sure these are lined up or else it's going to look a little weird. But if I zoom out now, you can see that we have a fully color separated image directly in uh, Illustrator. I was about to say Photoshop, but we have a completely color separated image that is completely vectorized, meaning we can scale this to any size and it is not going to lose quality. If you guys enjoyed the video today, please leave a like and don't forget to subscribe using the link in the description below. And if you guys want to see something else, leave a comment or just say, hi either way thank you guys so much for watching my name is charlie pangas i'll catch you in the next one peace